I'm Ravi. Namaskara. With me, I have uh, uh, Bill joining from California, David from uh, UK, uh, Diego from Berlin, Manoj from Chennai, Pooja Shah from Hyderabad, Pooja Jagani from Mumbai, Sri Asha from Hyderabad, and Tedas from Austin. We have our uh, Australian uh, people here. Uh, and I'm giving it over to Pooja Shah to take it from here. Thanks, Ravi. Um... Hi, everyone, and uh, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, for some of us, it is good evening, good morning, and probably I would stick to good day because we have people from probably 35 countries and like different time zones. Uh, you can see from Bill, like he's joining 5 a.m. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining on Saturday. Appreciate a lot um, uh, of your time uh, coming here with me. Uh, in this session, I know most of you have been waiting for this to ask your interesting questions. Um, with interesting, I mean like really hard questions you have for them, I know, and you would be wanting to be addressed. Uh, so we will jump into it uh, with all of them in, in a bit. But before that, you had been also waiting for one interesting announcement, like there were contests from our sponsors. And uh, let's see who is the lucky winner. So uh, we, uh, I'll just go and pull out the information of the lucky winners. But any guesses, like, like this is like uh, at almost end of the conference. Um, uh, any guesses on who probably would be winning this? Like bring some energy in the chat section. Like what do you think that who would be the winners of this, those contests? Some energy in the chat. That's tight as dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking uh, everybody is quite like guessing a lot. So I'll, I'll, I'll begin with announcing the winners. Um, starting with A for Apple Tools winners. Uh, this is this is for the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, the, the, the prize goes to uh, Chetan Pandey. Vice President Northern Trust, uh, and, and another is the I, the iPad uh, contest for which the winner is Ashwini Lalit, Manager Test QA Automation Digit, and the third prize goes to Pooja Shah iPhone iPhone Pro 13 Max. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that's not ah, the prize though. Okay. <laughs> uh, Apple Tools team is like, when did we announce iPhone 13 Pro? Okay, so the next prize goes to Brazil Stack winners. Uh, this prize is for Columbia Grand Wall Jacket. Uh, this goes to Zafar Sadiqi, Lead Estate, FRB NY, Pip Karina Adina, Head of QA Bloom, Shreya Agrawal, QA Engineer, Queen Street. Uh, thank you. I am not able to read the chat at this moment, but yeah, uh, uh, like appreciate them all for so for supportively attending the conference, talking to each other, learning a lot, networking, and also winning in return uh, and bringing a uh, smile on some faces. And last but not least, um, uh, we have Lambda Test winners as well. Uh, one lucky winner for Fix a Bug and Win a Goodie. That again goes to Chetan Pandey. It looks like he's about to hit a hat trick. Um, another prize for lucky winner, interesting conversation. This goes to Gaurav Ardwaj, uh, Senior IT Quality Assurance Specialist, MMC. And the um, uh, our biggest supporter, Hoss Labs uh, winner goes to, okay, so this winner has yet to come. It's still a surprise. And uh, you will see the mails coming from them. So watch out for the mails in a few days and you, you will never know you are the one of the winners. So, all right, um, thank you everyone again. And now we, will, we go to the section where you all have been waiting for like, really, really long. And for that, this will be a teamwork, okay? So for all of us, we need to go into Q&A section and all of us have to, have to put the questions which you would generally in a uh, physical setting you would ask directly. So, so go ahead, use your creative minds, use your unanswered questions, or creative questions, or fun questions, or hard questions, put them all there, and I will start, I'll, I promise, like Pinky promised to pick as many as, as possible from them. Cool. And, and uh, uh, the, the interesting part about this uh, composition would be, you can ask hard questions like, 
like like why uh, when is selenium supporting capture automation <laughs> and probably why did thanos snap his fingers uh, and why did uh, katappa kill bahubali uh, yeah they can totally answer it so so go and use your creative minds i have uh, i have like one small question before the audience ask so all the panel members thank you for coming in and thank uh, thank you for all the contributions you have been doing in different comrades and especially keeping this projects running up and running and that energy um uh, going on so um i would come to each one of you but for me to to begin with i, I have a lot of gratitude so thank you uh, for doing that so before audience ask i have one question for all of you and it's it's going to be fastest finger fast first so let's see who knows who, who the best among you all so you had been coding sometimes together sometimes separate on different work on different bindings but let's see if you know if you all know each other's well so i will put one question and the first one to answer uh, basically let's see who wins okay the question is a person um who runs long and long and long marathons so much interested in it that you can do marathons this person can do marathons like eating ice creams manoj manoj oh my god manoj. yes we have the answer <laughs> manoj yes titus titus is titus is titus <laughs> yeah is titus oh okay so we have competition titus versus manoj <laughs> uh and 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 i like you it can seems, have it seems someone has scrolled down my instagram feed <laughs> <laughs> yes so you can you both can help probably uh probably an alternative alternate career in olympics probably yeah cool to know so with that since we started with like most people voted for manoj i start with manoj and the way we were going to do is manoj um i would request you to introduce somebody in this panel and talk three pointers one about them uh about their current role in the project and uh, uh, one interesting fact about them and then manoj will go on. uh whoever manoj names that person will go on to uh introduce somebody else yeah. cool go ahead manoj sure um uh, my favorite pick is titus always um because i picked him already on one of the previous conferences so i still remember uh titus a very good friend has been around for quite some time in the selenium project uh before picking up his laptop i know for sure he spent a lot of time in army uh, blowing some ballistic missiles if i'm not wrong and uh, then for some reasons yeah now he's coding on ruby and becoming a polyglot programmer and picking up all the languages that he could uh, proving to be a true rock star in the selenium team and bringing in some new initiatives and fun fact i know um, i think everyone miss in conferences i know titus will miss a lot because he would miss getting the mangoes from you pooja uh, so the fun fact is man titus likes mango a lot <laughs> is it okay <laughs> mm, nice okay Over to you titus thank you and it's 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 the navy not the army it's a very important difference in the united states so um <laughs> but yes and uh, the last india conference i participated in it was my birthday and someone gifted me very kindly with some delicious uh, mangoes from india Um, Thank you. That's <laughs> Pooja, right? Was, it was that was a great that was a great event. Um Okay, so I am going to introduce Bill next because Bill is the brand new member on our team and he's just been fantastic so far. So Bill came from Sauce Labs as one of the the marketing gurus at Sauce Labs and he left Sauce Labs and decided to he wanted to keep helping out the community. and so he's joined uh selenium as a project leadership committee member and so far he's he's jumped in and gotten a bunch done that that we've we've been in need of uh moving things forward for a while and he's he's just been fantastic at that um uh fun fun facts about bill i'm trying to think um which of the the various uh um is one of my one of the first people that i met at sauce labs when i joined uh i 
See, I'm like, oh, I'll jump in. I know that's so much okay. About I'll just throw in. A, I'll just throw in a <laughs> quick fact. Anyway, I won't. I won't go. I won't go. Uh, keep going on. Other than uh, next time. Next time we see each other, we've, we've got a bottle of wine. We've got it. We've got it down together. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not a whole lot of fun at five thirty in the morning, so that's that's okay. <laughs> you get a pass. Um, so my name is Bill McGee. I uh, have been working alongside the Selenium Project since I first joined Sauce, which was about 10 years ago. And that was getting to know uh, some folks on this uh, panel uh, as we were putting together the conference in Portland and then followed that one up in Austin and then had a chance to bring the conference to uh, the continent, to Europe, uh, working with White October events. So. I'm very excited to be back with the band and looking forward to uh, continuing to push this community ahead and to provide the, the tools and the resources and the education that folks need to, uh, to be successful and to continue to, uh, to spread the gospel, uh, as, as it were, for, um, uh, for Selenium. So uh, being the new kid on the block, I, uh, there are a couple of uh, committers on this panel I don't know yet. So I'm going to uh, take the easy route and introduce uh, my former colleague, Diego. Uh, Diego, I met, uh, uh, I believe, at the first or second SauceCon we did in San Francisco. I think that's true. Uh, my superpower, Pooja asked us to remember uh, or to uh, talk about our superpowers. And, and mine is my ability to forget things instantly. So... Um, Whatever I'm saying right now may or may not be true. But anyway, I've had the pleasure of uh, working with Diego, uh, getting to know him. He's uh, done a fantastic job for the, uh, for the uh, project, uh, for the, uh, the open source uh, community, uh, and for the uh, meetups that he runs out of the Berlin office. Uh, um, a fun fact is that uh, I think it's fun, but uh, Diego has uh, two children who keep him very, very busy. And uh, I can imagine that the reason that they're celebrating his wife's birthday in a park is because there's a playground and that gives them all something to do while he's uh, sitting here on the uh, on the Zoom panel with the, all of you. Uh, anyway, very nice to, uh, to meet you uh, and I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing many of you uh, in person uh, as we move ahead. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to uh, Mr. Uh, Senor Molina. Thank you, Bill. That was very kind, and we're very happy to have you in the team again. And um, yeah, I don't have much to say about me, uh, just that I'm sitting on, on a parking lot right now because the family is celebrating. So I'm very happy here to join you all. And what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to um, introduce someone who I admire a lot, and is David Burns. So uh, one interesting thing is that even uh, so David works in browser stack and I work in source lab so out there people see us as competitors every single day we work together we have a friend relationship and this is uh, one of the cool things about selenium that even though we may work in different companies and people see us as competitors but we actually are very good collaborators and we work together um, almost every single day to to move the project forward and probably one of uh, a fun thing uh, that, that that david does is um that he he he's a really good manager but he says that he's not uh, or that he doesn't like to be a manager i don't know like he put, and he likes to he wants to be a product person so so maybe that will be his next role in selenium um, and his superpower is to create really good uh minis and tweets them and, and makes a running comes about our projects uh, through um, uh, decent and, and subtle uh, British humor. So over to you, David. Thank you for that, Diego. Um, I don't know how I can follow that on. Just, um, just when it was getting good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, uh, I've lost track of what I was supposed to be doing. So um, I think I'll just go, kind of move on uh, to kind of introducing the next person who I think uh, needs uh, introducing. Um, and it's the uh, person who has the new, I, I'm, I'm probably getting this wrong, but it's the person who I think is the newest committer uh, to the Selenium project is the uh, person who kind of uh, has 
taken some of the hardest problems that we've thrown at them and just run with them. Uh, and so I'm going to introduce you to Pooja. Uh, Pooja is kind of the, um, it works with me. Um, she was the second person in the uh, browser stack open source program office um, after me. Um, and so uh, there's that. Um, uh, and uh, Pooja's superpower, I think, is one thing that I really wish I had, uh, is that um, if you ever need something doc documented in a meaningful way that can kind of get people feeling good about themselves, uh, Pooja would be able to do that and then share it and then kind of teach you everything that you need to do with it. Um, Pooja's been fantastic. Um, and I've been kind of very thankful to have her on my team. So um, over to you, Pooja. Thank you so much, David. I think everyone understands that. Um, I think in spite of the understanding that you may not like being a manager, I don't know, but I think you're proving to be a good manager this time about it. Uh, but apart from uh, leaving our uh, manager and like that relationship aside, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, David. And uh, for the excellent opportunities I have received in the Selenium project, along with all the help, guidance and mentoring I get from the rest of the folks. I know that David and Titus, they're constantly... Um, putting on a lot of roles, uh, wearing a lot of hats and helping a lot us, like, you know, helping me answer a lot of difficult questions. And I really appreciate that. I think the next person I would like to introduce, um, again, I don't think this is last, but not the least sort of a thing. Um, I don't think Manoj has been introduced yet. I know we did a trivia, but I don't think uh, anyone introduced him. So I think I'm going to do that. I think there's Harsha. And she has yeah. Yeah. So that so I'd uh, like to introduce Manoj. Uh, my interaction with Manoj was, I think, when I made the first contribution in Selenium, uh, he wanted to celebrate it. And that that was actually a very good feeling. He asked me to create a Twitter account so we can celebrate it. And that's that was my first interaction. That's how I remember him. Uh, over the last few weeks, uh, me and Manoj have interacted a lot. And uh, it's been really good to know him. He has worn a consultant hat. He's worn a developer hat. Uh, his superpower is something that he likes teaching people. Likes um, When I say people, he likes talking to developers, making them aware of what is there. He enjoys that human connection is what I've learned in the last few weeks. And I really admire that about him. Uh, he's currently working as the VP for Dev Relations in Lambda Test. And again, to resonate with what David and Diego said, um, Yes, I think on the outside world, uh, we work for like, competitor companies, but I don't think that gets in the middle of what we do. Uh, we function as a team for the greater good that is Selenium. And I think me and Manoj have the same bandwidth on that. And uh, thank you, Manoj, for all the opportunities you've thrown uh, to me across this and guided me along. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. For a moment, for a moment, I was like, David is talking about me. And then I was like, no, no, that's another puja. <laughs> I'm on the one left in here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hi, all. Uh, this is Harsha. Uh, I'm working as a full-time automation tester at EBAM Systems, Hyderabad. So um, I joined in open source, uh, like, you know, the Selenium community uh, around in 2019. So I started, initially started contributing for the documentation and later, like, now I, I moved to the JavaScript bindings and, like, you know, currently fixing things and, like, you know, managing those. Yep. So um, as I'm speaking about myself, so I'll say fun fact about me. So even, like, you know, I think a few committers in this panel is not aware, uh, maybe. The fun fact is, like, you know, uh, this is the most embarrassing thing that happened a year ago. Uh, I accidentally deleted Selenium repository. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and Diego is the one like you know. Who... <laughs> yeah, real fun fact. <laughs> we we, we learned very. We, sorry, I was gonna say we learned very quickly that code is definitely uh, mutable at that point, um, uh, and but we were able to revert. Uh, I remember. I remember that fondly. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, so Manoj, were you aware of this? Um, I think after, not on that Saturday, but after. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. So, so now, um, uh, I think you guys have 
pass the test kind of thing knowing each other uh, I, and some of you did not pick others so it means that guys watch out for it like who picked you <laughs> that that is your best day to hang on but now yeah like like um, uh, puja and david said that even being competitions like when we come for the critical cause we are together and then we celebrate each other's uh, success so thank you for doing that uh with that i will move on to the our first very important question that um so i i kind of meet a lot of people um inside the community or otherwise also and a lot of people want to come and contribute to selenium uh, become one of um uh, be- become one of you uh, and they have certain set of queries around starting from like how can they do it uh get started along with there is also a, a Uh, a kind of uh, stress check like we uh, the first thing after covid also we understood that the first thing is to the self care is most important and that's where uh, this kind of worry worry some questions uh, comes from the people that okay uh, like most of you do your full time job and then you also do this uh, the committing code so so that is where i want to go uh, with one question where we will go in the round uh, or probably you would want to uh, who wants to take a stab at this question so the question is um, for everyone like uh, when you started and what was your first commit and how were you able to do it in a sustainable way uh, till date uh, basically without jeopardizing your uh, uh, life that life as well and um, how do you manage and still be able to enjoy the life So this was a literally a question from people like, oh, uh, are you even enjoying life if you're working 24 by 7 for your actual work and the uh, discipline work as well? So yeah, uh, starting with, uh, with what was your first commit to how are you able to keep it up while enjoying the life? Who wants to go first? I'll go first because um, I'm probably one of the oldest committers uh, on this project. Uh, so... Uh, how how did i what was my first commit um my first commit was documentation uh kind of the same way harsha started um uh i was doing i was working for a dotnet company at the time and documentation was abysmal um it's not got much better over the years but it, it has uh and then um the way i did it was that like i was setting up automation in a company um and i was trying to get selenium going and uh, so i was always using the latest nightly like i was pulling the code down building it doing things um and kind of the the meme where who broke it kind of very quickly became like the thing um from the selenium project which was always simon stewart right like he would land code um well meaning but he would break something um he would like oh i've just rewritten the dotnet bindings but i don't have a dotnet machine so i've not compiled it and you're like what what are you doing uh so that's how i got started um and then how do i how have i maintained it well um fortunately my next job after that was working at mozilla and i got essentially paid to work on the selenium project so and I, it maintained that way and still today i'm getting paid to work on it yeah uh, maybe my thing uh, can motivate people so uh, my first commit was like to the documents and it was a typo so it's not much of document it's just a typo and uh, simon stewart accepted it and like you know uh, that that was the most happiest moment that my there was a first commit on the selenium after like you know uh, six months i was trying to commit into the selenium and how how do i manage is something like to be different like you know i, I work as a full stack automation tester like you know i, I have a paid job so uh, i spend only like you know 30 minutes to one hour uh, to set the document or like you know to uh, look out the missing parts in the documentation and to like you know to write it and to provide the pr and like uh, and that's how i started like yeah probably go next um so i think my first commit was um same documentation i think there is a trend that's been following so folks if you're listening to it so documentation seems to be the best place to become a commuter so yeah um i still remember uh, i think i said it before as well uh, it was all in rst format in uh, back in days uh, from 20 2012 or 13 i believe that was my first uh, uh, conversation i think uh, after that i've been 
I've been a consultant. Uh, there is a going, there's a saying that goes by, you should be a jack of all trades. So I've done a bunch of things around Selenium, never been stuck to one thing. So, <laughs> so if you ask me anything in Selenium project, I can do, but I think if I have to go deep, I'll you know rely upon my colleagues here to uh, get some expertise. Uh, that's what I've been doing. And uh, how I've been managing, um, I think the question was around sustainable contribution. Um, I mean, honestly, I've never been a sustainable contributor. Like I've never been, uh, um, if you look at my GitHub profile, I've been on and off a contributor, not not every year. I think that's still okay to do as long as you know what the code is happening around, and uh, you should always take your time to, you know, unwind a bit. Um, if the work takes priority, please go ahead and do it. And then, like the other company, uh, the ID industry as it goes, the culture is very different when it compares to happen in India. So I had my first own laptop after uh, six years of my experience in my career. So only then I actually started to, you know, contribute until then I was not allowed to contribute in the company that I used to work for. So, uh, I'm sure many of you would have been in same situations and now, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot different. So, um, there's, it's never too late. So go ahead and, uh, do any contributions at any point in time you wanted. And, uh, how I unwind, I mean, um, I like biking. That's also my fun fact. So I uh, own a, a, a super fast bike, I would say. And I used to go go on a weekend ride and enjoy with my friends. I think, let me let me jump in and give give a different answer than documentation. Uh, I, was, uh, I was working at a company of, in Austin in 2015. Um, I was working with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was working with Brett Padicor. Um, I started using water for the first time. I met the company. There's a problem with how we're switching windows. And I'm like, oh, well, I can fix this in our company's code. And I'm like, well, but really, this is a bug in water. And so I go to water and I fix water, submit it. And then, I'm, but I'm like, well, wait, in order to actually get this to work in water, we need to fix it in Selenium. So essentially, I just walked up the code base until I found the root cause and then put in a request. And I still remember when Yari's like, oh yeah, no, we absolutely need to fix this, but do this a little differently here. And I'm like, oh, and I fixed it and I sent it in. And I, I was beyond excited when that commit got accepted by Yari in October of uh, 2015. That was like one of the best, or 2014, it was 2014. But uh, but yeah, that was super exciting. But, and, and from there, it was just a lot of, I did a lot of running the tests and finding bugs in the test suites and then finding ways to fix it or report it. And so like a lot of what I did early on was bug reporting. Just, hey, let's try running the suite in Windows. Oh, hey, Firefox, you know, 40 just came out. Let's let's run the test suite on Mac. And oh, look, there's some things that are broken. Let me file. I think the Edge team said I had over 50% of the bugs reported in the Edge HTML version at one point, just because of all of the stuff I was doing. So that's another way that is, is easy to jump in and con contribute is just find the problems and report them. As far as maintain, main, maintaining energy, I think this is where the collaborative process comes in a little bit is I have stepped back a couple times in the course of the last um, eight years where I'm just like, you know what? I'm a little burned out on Selenium, Alex, can you take care of the Ruby stuff? I'm just going to, you know, take a break for a couple of years, take a break, come back for six months while he's doing something else. And then someone else steps in and does some stuff. And I take an, another small break. Um, and now I'm just back in it again um, this past year, partly because I work at Sauce Labs and my job at Sauce Labs actually isn't focused on writing Selenium code, but I end up doing a lot of that just because I really enjoy the work and I enjoy the people and, uh, and the project needs it right now. So. Uh, I can jump next. Uh, my first contribution was to the Docker Selenium project, and then um, a bit to the grid. But but most of all, I was helping with the with the readme in the Docker Selenium project, so we could call that documentation. Um, but more than that, like taking the time, uh, because I have seen in the last couple of years many people joining in the sense of getting the almost there to get the commit bit. So mm, I think my message uh, about how to get a contributor. Is actually it's not that hard to be a contributor if you need to contribute to the docs or any other part of the code because you just need 10 commits to actually become a, become a committer. What I have seen is that people start very strong and lose the, the consistency. So you don't need to work a lot of hours every day, just maybe three, uh, sorry, 30 minutes or, or one hour, like every now and then to find the tasks you want to work on. Uh, but more, more, more importantly than everything, 
you actually don't need to contribute code to join the Selenium project. You can be a triager and, and help with the GitHub issues, you can answer questions, or you can just be someone who promotes Selenium by doing talks, by helping us to, I don't know, give tweets about it and so on. And the perfect example is, is someone who has a lot of experience, knows Selenium, understands Selenium, is part of the project and has never contributed a line of code. And that is Bill, for example. Like he's part of the yeah. team and like you don't need to write code to, to be part of Selenium. And if I was to contribute anything, it would probably be to erase the uh, code base or whatever. But thank you, Diego, I appreciate that. And you're absolutely right. I mean, my first contribution was working on the conference with you all and really, you know, uh, carrying the torch forward in terms of uh, building the community and, and educating. So uh, I appreciate that. But one of these days, I will make a, a commitment to documentation, probably. Yeah. So, so maybe um, uh, with the interest of time, I'll I'll uh, just drill here more, uh, Bill. Um, so, so we got to know that you uh, you plan for retirement and um, it's still chose to to work with us on the uh, program committee. So, how has your experience now looks like, and uh, uh, what do you feel for the 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 income coming days uh, about your contribution apart from the documentation that you want to do now? Well, I think uh, retirement hasn't lasted very long. I'm actually uh, in the coming days hope to, uh, some of you know Denali Luma, uh, and I've been working with Denali on uh, a project that she's been doing and I'm very, uh, very much looking forward to sharing that with everyone. Uh, we're still in stealth mode right now, but uh, uh, it's good. I, one of the things is, uh, you know, I went out and I signed up for a computer science class and I figured I'd learn, you know, fix my golf game and I'd be a, a you know contribute to the selenium project and I would do this and I would do that and it's it's kind of interesting how you try to fill your day uh and what I've, I've found is that it you really do need to focus and you know pick one or two things and and pursue those make them your mantra so uh that's been good but I'm very much looking forward to uh working with the team getting to know uh others uh other committers um and uh, talk about uh, what we do next with uh, the Selenium Conference. Are we going to do Q&A before that, or should I? Is this the reveal? <laughs> yeah. OK. So thanks, Bill. And then um, we appreciate you taking time and working with us. Uh, I'll move to the next question now, uh, which is more about uh, people wanted to know. It's a common question across that. Um, uh, web being ever evolving uh, uh, with the the new protocols like the W3, um, sorry, Web3, uh, Web3, and uh, in the world of AML to Web3, what do we think that Selenium is keeping up with that pace to be able to to basically add value as an automation tool? I think Selenium can add value when Web3 decides that it's not going to be grifter's paradise and now it actually adds value to the web. Uh, that, that's my belief. Like crypto and Web3 uh, has a lot of bad actors that I think need to kind of, the that area needs to get rid of all the bad actors to actually so, show something of value. Um, I like some of the things that are coming out with, uh, I think they're calling it Web5 now, which is properly des decentralized stuff. Uh, the idea is it's Web3 plus Web2, which is why you got Web5. Um, but again, uh, the, there's, um, there's some beliefs that I think need to change, like the idea that uh, I can have an NFT of a diamond that is more valuable than the actual diamond, um, and I could try smash the diamond. Uh, it seems bizarre um that they the you know people who seem to be smart seem to be going in all on this but so i appreciate i'm biased on these things yeah anyone has anything to add to that uh with aiml also already being in the place well uh, I, I think it's interesting that more um um technologies emerge and and we feel that they will help us to solve the problems that we have currently um and that is leading us to think that tools are the things that will solve problems when we don't actually think about 
the problem itself. Um, so at some point, though, evidently, some AI tool will help you to find better locators and all this. But, but taking one step back and sitting together in your team where you develop and, and, and trying to make the application more testable, like figuring out those things is, is much more better than actually figuring out how the new technologies will help us. So, so we need to keep up to date and figure out how these things work. So when we understand our current problems, we can use them together with them. Um, so, f so far, I mean, there is a lot of opportunity, but I don't see so far how we can put those things together yet. Um, but really keep up to date and, and let's figure out how to solve the things we have currently um, so we can actually use the new technologies. Yeah, so that's a very, very fair point, David and Diogo. Thanks for answering that. Um, I personally get these questions, look, okay, we, uh, are, are like a lot of people work in analytics, um, uh, data analytics projects, and they want to figure out if Selenium can do that also along with it. And my answer always goes like, okay, the way this is built, we can also build and we can use Selenium to drive the things which you have to do mentally. Uh, but people expect that probably Selenium would magically do that. Um, so yeah, so more awareness we can create uh, or more frameworks we can create, which also brings me to the next question that in all of your experience, um, what are the community projects which are built on top of Selenium, which may not necessarily be about only test automation? I think uh, someone has tried automating the Google's offline Dino game that we used to play, Sudarshan, if I'm, the name is right. I still call that as a project because it's an innovative way of using Selenium. Selenium is not, I mean, we say it's a browser automation, but if you read the documentation, the line it says, uh, we automate browser, but the rest is upon you. Like whatever you like to do, you can do. And I think that's been proved. And uh, that is one of the cases. And we also seen uh, Michael uh, Mintz giving a talk around automating Wordle. So uh, the power is up to you and you can do. I think to me, uh, that was fascinating. Yeah, that would be cool. Any other examples? Like I heard in IRC, a lot of requests comes uh, asking for fancy things or doing some bad things as well. Any fun example? Um, Someone's asked, have... that... oh, sorry. Oh, you sorry. go, Peter. Yeah. You go, uh, I, I don't think they've built that yet, but I know someone reached out because they wanted to discuss about this AI product. They wanted to build, um, to use the web to assist humans. I think more like web GPT um, to have that browser or question answer conversation sort of going, not exactly, but they wanted to see how Selenium can help. Uh, that conversation never went ahead for various reasons, but I know that was being looked into. So something like that. Yeah, cool. David, you wanted to go. Uh, the, the silliest, your question was, what's the silliest thing people have wanted to use Selenium for? Uh, my my favorite of all time is someone asked, uh, I need to do some database tests. How can I do this with Selenium? I was like, what? <laughs> no? Um, yeah. Like, I, 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 I'm probably going to get into trouble for this, um, um, but I'm going to kind of reiterate something Simon Stewart used to say quite regularly is like if you've got more than one test there's a likelihood you've, you're doing it wrong um, right and it, he only he said like if you say 10 people will focus on you know you can only have 10 but like one is a hard number um, and so like don't focus on the number but the idea that like you know you should be thinking of other things, not just Selenium. Um, and there are other tools for other things. Um, it's the reason why Selenium can't do capture. Like, you know, it, it's firstly, it's not designed to do that. Um, and capture is not designed to be automated. Like that's the whole point of it. Um, it's the same as when people go, I'd like Selenium to log into Gmail so I can get my emails for me. I'm like, well, that's not, not what it's really designed for. I appreciate it's an automation tool, but there's an IMAP, use that. Yeah. So there is one more related question in the Q&A. Uh, if we have any plans to build API testing automation directly within the Selenium. Uh, Maybe let me jump, in on, let me jump yeah. in on some of this. I, yeah. uh, this is one of the issues, uh, you know, we've been talking about this quite a bit on the Selenium team. Um, one of our frustrations is, is really since WebDriver kind of took over Selenium, 
Selenium is not itself a testing tool. It is a browser automation tool that you can use to do really good testing if you set it up well. Uh, we're, Selenium is constantly compared with other tools that are testing tools. There are quasi open source tools out there that set up a bunch of opinions for how here's a test runner, here's, here's the, you know, the, the assertion library, here are the things that make it easy uh, to synchronize and do things for testing. Selenium intentionally tries to be unopinionated. It intentionally tries to, no, you can do whatever. We're not going to force synchronization on you. We're not going to force a specific test runner on you. You have everything available to you with this code. And so the idea from, from our side, when someone's like, well, why aren't we doing API testing with it? It's like, well, there's, there, this is a browser automation tool. It is not a, an API tool. There's another API tool in your language that you just use at the same time as, as Selenium. And I think what a lot of people are looking for is a tool that will wrap everything together for them. And there are tools out there in the open source that do that, that work on top of Selenium. And that's one of the things that we on uh, the team here want to be pushing forward more is the water, the capybara, the selenide, the fluent lenium, the atata, the all, all of these things that, that try to provide testers with a testing experience while still using uh, the, the powerful tooling of WebDriver and, and all the work the Selenium team is doing un, under the hood. And one of the first things we're looking at doing, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I'm not sure if it's been said at the conference already, but we are trying to put together, I am putting together a conference next month, a small summit to get the, the maintainers of these different projects in the same room as some of the Selenium devs here. So we can talk about these things and figure out how we can get what our users who want to use Selenium for testing, we wanna find ways to get them what they need um, in our ecosystem better uh, because we recognize that we're just one component and we, we think a lot of people have this idea that we should be all of the components. And the only way we can provide what the users need is to work together and collaborate and to get more people with more perspectives working together to do those things. Yeah. Thanks, Titus. Um, uh, did, for the interest of time, we have so many more questions to be addressed, but I would pick maybe one uh, from them. Um, so with the adoption of uh, W3C, uh, which we did last year and the upcoming for the web uh, web by the protocol which uh, Diego and Manoj also touched upon in the keynote last yesterday um, want to know like what does happen on in those meetings and as a user or as a contributor in some way uh, can someone be observer there learn from it or contribute back also um, I'm going to dive into this one uh, since I, I chair those meetings. Um, can anyone join those meetings? Most definitely. Um, are those meetings minuted and uh, are the minutes shareable? Yes, they are. Like we do nothing hidden uh, whatsoever. Um, everything is done on uh, GitHub in the W3C's um, organization. So I think it's uh, github.com slash W3C slash webdriver hyphen by die, B-I-D-I. So it's, um, and so all of that is in the open. Um, and uh, so there's some work that is going on there. Anyone is more than welcome to join. There's even a public mailing list that you can join. It's like super low traffic. Um, so it's the uh, public, uh, uh, it's the, the, the working group is the browser testing and tools working group, which I chair. Um, and anyone can, join it there's a mailing list you join that um in the mailing list like if there's updates to the um like calendar invites or the calendar all the calendar invites go there um mostly because if i have to invite people individually it becomes untenable like it's just so much work to go or oh, have i remembered this person if i just send it to the mailing list then people can do it themselves and then kind of i can just make minor changes as and when i need to them um and then uh just like if you're still unsure, if you don't know where to go, I'll, I'll, what I'll do for after this is I'll create a um, 
uh, I'll do a tweet with all the links for people. So I'm at Automated Tester on Twitter, um, and I'll do the same on LinkedIn. Um, so that it'll just be public, and people can join it. Like the, nothing is done in in behind closed doors. And then um, I'm going to hand off to Pooja on this one. But like Pooja's doing some awesome work in this space as well. Um, again, none of it is hidden. Um, so do you want to fill in what you've been doing, Pooja, on the Bido stuff? Um, yeah, I think uh, we, when we, we want to see, we want to support Bida. The way we started is uh, CDP came into the picture, and I think we already had a uh, few talks yesterday. I think he noted Diego and Manoj covered a few differences and the transitions, and we also had a dedicated webinar or just to show the Bida progress browser site. So I'm not going to cover that, but uh, um, we have some. We designed some front-facing uh, APIs. Uh, which are backed by CDP because that is what we had. And as the buy dice spec is work in progress, um, Selenium is trying to create these set of APIs. And I think there was a lot of discussion that went between, I think, Diego Titus, David, myself, around how we can do this. So uh, we worked on a tech spec where we work with, uh, we've come up with these APIs that are easy to use from the user, maybe as simple as the way you do driver.get for a URL. You do driver dot dom, you know, start a browsing context, driver dot get a dom event, something very simple, very intuitive. But in the background, that uses the by dive protocol. Um, the users don't have to be aware of the implementation details, but so we're trying to work towards a more unified API that all languages will follow. Um, again, you can think the way uh, WC3 spec was there and we had uh, commands to do the same thing and some uh, other. Uh, you know, supporting APIs that do a little bit over it. We have that for WC3 or web driver spec. Similarly, we have a plan that's in process or the effort that's been going on to do the same thing for BiDi. Like we have the BiDi spec, we'll have the commands that will be mapping-ish and something more that user-friendly methods that can do a little bit more on top of that. So that's that's the problem. And folks in India, it is BiDi, not BD. It's BiDi. Uh, it's it's, and it's for, short. For, yeah, it's short for bidirectional, which is why we keep calling it bi So it's, yes. it's we're lazy. For, con yeah, for context of, for David, Bill, Diego, and Tata's, BD is a Indian name for cigarette. Uh, yeah. And it also is spelled as B-I-D-I. So yeah, it's bi -di, folks. All right. So this with this, we are towards the end of this session. Um, but I just want to leave the audience, um, uh, especially came for this, is to know um, basically like how much as a newcomer uh, I need to prepare myself. I'm talking in, in, in the context of somebody asking as a commit, uh, somebody looking up to commit. Um, what is the fundamental core fundamentals and architecture of Selenium project that I need to be aware myself, prepare uh, to be able to contribute? Uh, since Pooja and Harsha have been, fair, been little fairly uh, recent to join, uh, maybe they can shed more light, uh, my, more light on uh, what somebody in the position to basically uh, start with and where they can just start with. Okay, so uh, I suggest, like, you know, they can start contributing from the documentation itself. So uh, I'm pretty sure. Document it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the, like, in the main place to get started. So, whatever you say, uh, if I'm, like, you know, not a developer, uh, so if I'm going to contribute to learn how it is structured first, I say it is the documentation. So, whether it is the yeah. same documentation or go into the README or whatever it is. So, yeah. And somebody so, uh, wants somebody that, wants you know, to know somebody sorry sorry for interrupting. Uh, somebody wants to know like is there something I need to understand the entire Selenium architecture before I begin? Uh, what would you say to them? Uh, this is a tricky one. So uh, you you need to spend some time to understand the Selenium architecture a lot. Like you know first uh, you need to go into the Selenium code and you can also look into the web driver uh, like you know specifications how it is structured and kind of thing. So yeah. Uh, I can say pretty, yeah, you, you need to spend some time. Um, I have a slightly different opinion on that. Uh, thank you, Harsha, for that. But uh, so I think if you want to get started, I know we've covered a lot on documentation and a very valid uh, point there. But I think we've been trying, um, everyone, as we go through the issue tracker, everyone's been trying to add some uh, useful tags. Uh, there's one that says needs help. There's one that says maybe easy. I'm not sure the exact naming part and if I've gotten it wrong. But if you ever go through the issue tracker, you might see these small bugs that you can help with. 
these are pretty much bugs or small features that might not need you to understand the entire system. And I also say this contributing to Selenium, yes, depending on the feature you're working on or the bug you're solving, you might need an understanding of the entire ecosystem. But it's a simple analogy. I think most of us in our day-to-day -day jobs, uh, we work on really big systems, really big code bases. We don't necessarily understand the whole thing. Um, a small part, a small slice is sometimes enough to just get you started. And then you build on top of it. It could be something how uh, Titus is experienced. When you realize, okay, there's a bug here, there's a bug here. It was like a waterfall that went to, which trickled down to selenium having a bug. And without understanding the whole system, uh, someone was able to pitch in. Uh, that could be a process as well while using selenium. That's the other side if we're doing it. So um, understanding the whole picture is, uh, again, it depends, but it's not something how one, what one needs to get started. Also, uh, when I joined, I had a lot of questions. Even for a small issue, I would just have a lot of questions as what is to be done. Uh, selenium community has been beautifully supportive. They answer all your questions. Um, they make sure if you're doing the right practices, they will guide you in the right direction always. Uh, so just trust the community. If you're coming out, coming to us, just trust the lovely team that we have to help guide you in anything that you need. We are also mindful of your times and timelines. Uh, there's never a pressure. Hey, could you do this right now? No one ever talks in that sense. Everyone's appreciative of the time and effort that goes in. Cool. I can just Thanks. Jump in real Roger. quick on on that. I just want to say that's exactly correct. And you don't even need to solve a problem on the issue tracker. If you come to Selenium's issue tracker, just reproduce something. Just say, "Oh yes, I tried out this this scenario on Windows with Firefox, you know, 102, and I saw the exact same issue." That helps us a lot because otherwise we have to try and do the same thing and and time adds up a lot. It's so helpful when people could be like, I see the same thing or, oh, hey, I got something slightly different for this reason. So that's another thing that you can do as well. And um, we keep talking about um, conversations with us. Make sure that you're you're in the uh, Selenium Slack channels. Um, find our Selenium Slack and all of the conversations with the contributors in the community are available there. Cool. Slightly related to that. Um, I would say if you're looking at um, issues, that's great. Thanks for all of the answers. Uh, I would say, firstly, try to look at the documentation and build Selenium. I think that's the first thing I would recommend. And there is a lot of tests that we've written and try to run them. I think that will be my uh, first pick to look at because if I'm able to uh, run the basic Selenium jar uh, and looking at you know building Selenium or different client language bindings and know where the test is, I think from there, it'll be a lot easier. And then I would look at the um, issues to see maybe label as uh, help wanted. I think that's the type we use or easy, medium. I'll go by that phase to see if there is anything that I can pick up and run. So hope that helps. Cool. So we, we uh, thanks Manoj for that. Um, we are about to end the session now, uh, but the energy is so high right now in the chat and in the Q&A. So we are just extending a few more minutes. I hope that's okay for everyone. Uh, so we'll just pick one last question, uh, which is a hot question. Uh, there is Cypress picking up pace rapidly. Uh, so how and what are we looking to improve in Selenium to still stay relevant? Uh, I, I think there are several uh, facts that we need to establish first. And is um, there's a huge difference between both things. As Titus mentioned, Cypress is a full-fledged testing tool. Uh, Selenium is a, is a tool to, to automate browsers. And another fundamental difference is that Selenium is a, is a completely open source project, not for profit. Cypress is a company that runs for profit. And, and then you are just uh, binded to whatever they do in their tool. You cannot really um, influence their uh, roadmap much. So, so that those are huge differences. And one key thing that may mislead uh, users and the community is that we believe that Cypress is growing a lot. And yeah, I mean, they're, they're growing because there are needs in the community to, to, to fill out different functionalities. But if you check the keynote with Manoj, we were, share, we were sharing with you all the data that, for example, David has been collecting. And we see that Selenium is still growing in the last two years. Every quarter, there is a 25% growth. So the difference is that we don't have a lot of marketing to show that to everyone, right? 
uh, we're not like shouting every single second that we are bigger than the other ones. We're actually helping the community to grow, to, to understand how to automate, help you if you want to become a committer, if you want to contribute, if you want to do a talk, we help you all with all those things. And to address the specific question, yes, we are doing things, we're connected with the web driver by die um, standard, we're going to have all these features part of Selenium that will help you to have testing much more stable, much more uh, long lasting and, and, and future proof because we are working on a standard that will make your code work when you upgrade to a new version. Like what happens with other new frameworks is that they change the API very often. So when you have to upgrade, you have to change a bunch of code. We're working on a standard so you have tests that work for years, actually. This is what has happened. Um, and in general, uh, I think it's good to have competition. They have good things. We have learned from them. We have good things they have learned from us. And the important thing is that we're open to talk to any other tool that has interesting approaches so we can work on all together and, and, and we can make things better for the community. And the sun yeah. is on top of me. OK, yeah. I'm just going to move. <laughs> That's real sunshine, Diego, answering uh, uh, for the, the controversial controversial question but yeah that's a very good perspective like we 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 embrace the diversity and, and diversified opinions even from the competitors to to keep going and also the kind of supports with the different binding uh that's that's really big and, and the question is not more for who is best or who is better but depending on your needs you choose different things and sometimes you just ping them together amalgamation of it and then you you get your results out of it so 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 it is going is going to stay all all hell um uh for that so uh, with that we uh, reached towards the end uh, and i like to thank everyone of you uh the speakers and the attendees to stick around and hearing us throughout the conference learning with each other and I hand over my to Bill uh, for the announcement of the next conference. He had some secret announcement. Thanks, Pooja. And again, thanks to everyone on the panel. It's been uh, great to share this. Um, so for those of who, you who have been to prior Selenium conferences, you know that this is the time where we do reveal uh, where the next uh, conference is going to be. And it gives me a very great deal of pleasure to announce that our next U.S. conference is going to be back in person. Uh, so it will be great to uh, to see you all. I know there's a lot of uh, pent up demand and, and excitement to uh, get to see everyone in the community again. So we are going back to Chicago. Uh, it will be in March of 2023, the last week of March, uh, March 28th through 30th. Uh, and uh, more to follow. Um, there is a save the date page up right now. Uh, and we will soon get the uh, CFP up and running, but uh, please do mark your calendar and uh, we hope that you'll be able to uh, to join us. Um, the fun fact about Chicago is that it's now where Jason Huggins, the uh, creator of Selenium lives with his family. And I've been talking to him about that we're, uh, the fact that we're coming back to Chicago and uh, while his interest is, is still uh, automation, uh, it's in the world of robots right now, and uh, he'd very much like to do a robot dance-off uh, while we're in Chicago. So stay tuned for more on that. But uh, thank you, uh, Pooja, for moderating, and again to the panelists, uh, and uh, hope to see everybody in uh, Chicago next March. Thanks, Bill. And with this, we are completely at the end, finally. Uh, but I know a lot of faces do not want to go though sleep deprived, but still want to be uh, talking to each other. So I like to end this with thanking each and everyone again, um, especially the people who are not visible on this, uh, working in the background, a lot of commuters who could not make uh, today, but uh, it, uh, like special gratitude to all of them. And uh, uh, there will be a few questions from uh, for Constance's perspective, uh, a lot of people uh, asking like, uh, how can we uh, contribute? Uh, apart from uh, committing, that answer also probably has come uh, from Mani Manoj earlier and, that, and Diego that there are so many ways you can contribute. And then there is a question like, how can I speak at the conference next time? Uh, for that also, we have pretty open process thanks to Naresh and team there. Uh, we, have the, uh, we have the conference platform uh, where every proposal comes in uh, and uh, it gets reviewed by, again, people chosen uh, 
uh, from the community uh, uh, bases uh, their contributions before, and that is also open again. So there is an announcement for a uh, call for proposal happens. There is an announcement for committee members also happens. It's not something uh, that uh, we have randomly picked up some some people. Uh, it's the proposals comes in, and then we see that okay, this people this person can actually add a value, and they come on board, help us review the proposals, and these all processes starts like six months to one year before. Um, uh, actually, and then uh, then finally, what you see these two days of version comes out to you. So yeah, uh, we're pretty open that way, uh, and every proposal goes uh, via the the uh, constructive uh, reviews and feedbacks also. So that's something uh, most of our us reviewers are trying to do. So thanks every um, uh, every basically com committee members also to do that. Uh, we also saw Mari doing wonderful job. People thinking, um, uh, getting the nice feedbacks so that 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 can convert into the actual talks and also for the ne the next time. So uh, thank you again. Uh, we I also want to thank you the 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 logistics uh, team uh, that also works with Naresh to make this. Uh, find out which platform, where can we do, oh, we are offline, how do we still be able to connect and all of that. So, so, so thank you, everybody. And thank you, thanks to the food committee at your home who are making sure that you are still staying, uh, sticking on your seats and can watch and talk and eat food on time. So thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for that as well. Um, and last, last not the least, Naresh, again, thanks to you. And with that, signing off, Thank you and see you all again uh, wherever and whenever we can meet, but at least in the next Salim Con. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Pooja, Thanks, for thank hosting so much, us. Pooja. And everyone, I think this is the sixth thank edition. Uh, can't wait thank for the you. next one. <laughs>